Pronghorn Productions TV is brought to you by Stokes Archery of Wanakee, Wisconsin. Pronghorn Productions TV is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Dagaboy Safaris, hunt South Africa and live your dream. Stealth Outdoors, makers of the Bark Silencer, keeps you quiet before the shot. Stokes Archery of Wanakee. Muzzy Broadheads, bad to the bone. Town and Country Insurance Services, serving Wisconsin for over 30 years, large enough to insure you but small enough to know you. And Vortex, the force of optics. This week on Pronghorn Productions TV, trout fishing with Len Harris of Richland County, Wisconsin. Len, what uh, counties do you normally fish? I fish what I call the heart of the Driftless area. It's Crawford, Vernon, Grant, and Richland counties. Right. And uh, is there a specific uh, species you target? Well, I target brown and brookies mostly. With every once in a while, I get lucky and get a rare tiger trout. Tiger trout. Now, I'm not real familiar with that, and I'm sure most folks aren't. Uh, do you think we're going to run into any of those today? or? Tiger trout require brook trout in, this, in the waterway, okay. and this waterway is known for its brown trout and some released brooder bows. There's some really big rainbows in there. We might get lucky and hook into a 30-plus inch here. Alrighty. But with no, with no brook trout, that means no tigers, Alrighty. because a tiger is a cross between a male brook trout and a female brown. Oh, okay. Alrighty. And as far as uh, equipment and tackle you prefer to use or, or, or what weights and, and things like that, what, what, are we, what are we looking for to catch these big browns? Well, I guide both spin and fly anglers, and I'm a firm believer in bigger is better. You won't see me with a two-weight or a three-weight fly rod in my hand. It'll be a five-six, and I'll be using a medium action spinning rod and eight-pound test, and I'll be throwing with my fly rod big woolly buggers and big nymphs and with my spinning rod I'll be throwing size 6 or 9 Panther Martins or size 2 and 3's MEPS or maybe I'll, if I have a real deep hole I'll put on a Countdown Rapala in 7 or 9. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. And, that, and that's what you feel is, is the best way to catch these big fish is to use a bigger, bigger, heavier lure, correct? Bigger is better. I would give 30 little trout for one big trout. A big trout on a fly rod I would say is 15 to 17. A big a big uh, trout on a spinning rod is 18 to 22. Anything over 22, I, it falls into the huge category in my book. <laughs> All right, well, let's see if we can go catch some fish. Come on along. Let's get them. I usually only cast two or three times in a specific area because spinners are reactionary baits, and if they're going to hit them, they're going to hit them on the first couple times through, and they aren't going to hit them at all. So I went right down through where I was supposed to do. There's nothing there. We're going to move up to the spill. Today's weather is really good for trout. It's overcast. You don't want a bright sunny day. And you want a little bit of color to the water. Today's water is quite well. I'm going to try to drop it in right below these rocks. There's a step drop down there. And that's where the big trout like to hide, right below a step drop. We'll see what we can do. trout are a lot like northern pike. They're reactionary and they're predators and if you're going to get a big fish, a big trout, you're probably going to get it in about your first 10 casts. So you've got to cut apart the spillway. I've hit it pretty good but I'm going to put one more in there. The 
if I was fly fishing this, I would use a 5 6 weight. I'd put on a big old size 8 or 6 black lily bugger and a strike indicator and try to drop it in right at the white and slowly strip, strip them out there bring it back to me and not give up on the cast because I've actually had them hit right at my feet here before. This, this hole has got a 26 incher that lives here. Her name's Molly. She still lives here. I let her go twice now. We're going to move up the stream. And we're upstream now of where we started. We're fishing in Richland County. We targeted the beginning place because it had a lot of water movement. Water movement equates directly to oxygen in the water. And if you don't have oxygen in the water, the fish won't stay. And when, as it gets warmer, the oxygen leaves in the water. So this flat part that we just saw prior doesn't have enough current movement. And when it gets warm, there's a lack of oxygen in here, so the fish move out of here. So I typically will walk by this type of water and look for some current. Now this is what we're looking for. We just walked past a lot of flat water. We're looking for a current lane or what I call a feed trough. Fish hang right on the edges of those and that, that's the dinner bell right there in a fish's mind. He, they hang right on the edges and the food's brought right down to them and 90% of trout face upstream to, to look for their next meal. So that's why I always, almost always fish upstream. And I'm going to get in and also I'm going to take a water temp here also. And this is a handy dandy thermometer. I got it. This time of the year you want at least 40 degree water to fish because they're really lethargic if they're not at least 40. The water's not at least 40. And in the summer, you don't want anything over 70 for water temperature because at 70, all the oxygen starts leaving the water and the fish will die even if you have a short battle with them. There'll be a lactic acid buildup. You'll let them go and you'll, they'll appear to be fine. 10 minutes later, they'll be belly up and deader than dead. 70, 40. Don't fish anywhere near 70 and make sure that it's 40 before you try. But I have fished lower than 40 degrees and still caught fish. But these are the magic numbers. Let's go take a water temp. This segment of Pronghorn Productions TV was brought to you by the Bark Silencer from Stealth Outdoors. Keeps you quiet before the shot. Get ready for the season at Stoke Sports. Get stoked. You know that the right equipment installed properly can make all the difference in the success of your hunt. You've thought about going to those big box stores, but you're looking for a better archery buying experience. Get stoked. All bows and accessories are set up free, paper tuned, and come with a lifetime annual checkup. Get ready for the season at Stoke Sports in the Wanakee Village Mall at the corner of Highway 19 and County Road Q. Get stoked. It's the perfect way to commemorate your achievement. Whether in the woods or on the water, a custom field portrait from whatyougit.com captures that unforgettable moment. Simply give us your photo and have it transformed into a variety of unique trophy displays customized with your information. Visit us online today at www.whatyougit.com to learn more. Potato River Guide Service, experience the Northlands. Uh, the shot opportunity, we've been running 100%. Send them an email at thebearguide at yahoo.com or just call me at 715-893-2467. We'll show you a good time and a good hunt. Yeah. This segment of Pronghorn Productions TV is brought to you by Dagaboy Safaris. Hunt South Africa and live your dream. Important to keep it in at least 10 seconds to get a real reading. And you don't want to do the top of the water because the bottom of the water is the important part. Fish don't hang on the top of the water. They like being down a little ways. So it's about 50 degrees out currently outside temp. We'll see what the water is. And the water temperature is 42. I'd have thought it had been closer to 48, but 42 is still a good temp. Fish should be biting. As the day wears on, it'll warm up a little. The fish will bite better. Let's go get some fish.
I actually have a size 9 Panzer Martin on now. It's called a 9 uh, PM Deluxe. Part of the reason I go so big is so I don't have the little ones chasing it and biting it. It's actually a little big for them and it scares them. Like I said, I'm targeting big ones. There might be a bunch of little fish sticks in there, but I, I want their mom or their grandma. Where's the fish? And he got off. That's why it's called fishing, not catching. That was about a 12 inch, I'm guessing. He got up in the air and shook his head and he was off. Typically when you drink, oh, there's another one. Let's get this one to hand this time. This one's a little bigger. I'm known for my large net. I got this net from a gentleman from up in uh, Superior. His name is Lloyd. I can't pronounce his last name because it's Danish. It's got more vowels and letters. It's a nice little brownie. I tried to do a five second rule. Let him go. Send your mom. I want your mom. Typically, you see where those brown Weeds are hanging over. There's usually a fish hanging right there because it's a dead spot where the current's not really high. There we go. Let's see if we can find one hanging right under that that old weed. Right about there. Yeah, there was a hit. We go back and get him. Oh, there's one right there again. Oh, that's a nice one. Ha -ha. There we go. Let's get him. Oh, come on! Ah, there we go, <laughs> and he's unhooked already. <laughs> Boy, that's not a bad fish at all. Let's get it. Let's get the rod on shore. Leave. You notice I'm leaving the fish in the water. I'm not playing with it. I'm going to unhook the spinner. Yeah, we're going to get the fish. We'll get the spinner out later. This one's got a little better side. Notice I'm wetting my hand before I touch the, the fish because the fish has got a protective slime coat that you'll that you'll uh, knock off. And I'm not grasping the fish real hard either because their inside organs are pretty delicate. This one's for sure a male because he's pointed head and he's nice kipe. And we're gonna send him home. This is good. I like this one. Bye bye. You'll never ever hear anyone say, I wish I had a smaller net. The gentleman that makes these nets is from Superior. His website is ldhnets.com. This is bird's eye maple. I have four of them. I have one in black ash, one in walnut burl, and this is my favorite. It's got at least 40, 20 inches netted in it. This is my bird's eye maple. Let's get some more fish. This is the cow crossing. Usually below a cow crossing, get a little bit of silt, means a little less oxygen. So above is usually better. Last time out, I was out with my buddy Florin Getz, and he got about an 18 inch rainbow right here. About the same cast. We'll see if, see if it's home. There's a fish, a littler one, not very big, a little brownie it looks like from the flash. Yep, little brown trout. Really important not to lift the fish out of the water by the line, because you'll tear it, you'll tear its mouth real badly. Torn mouth equates to dead fish. The bigger fish in this hole is going to be up at the top. He's going to be in the prime feed lanes. If you look up top there, you can see it's shallow, and then all of a sudden the ripples stop. That means that there's a step drop there, and that's where the food is. That's the prime, the very first and best feed lane in this hole.
There's, oh, he's off. I had a bite. We still got more to go. It wasn't a very big fish. There are a few chubs in here. There's a fish. There's a dancer. There you go. Nice brown. I'm looking for the big rainbow that comes here, but we'll take a brown. So I'm going to get it up and get it out pretty quickly, unhook it all in one. You notice I did not pick it up by the line. And I also it got wrapped in the net a little bit. We'll have her out lickety split. And there's a nice Richland County Brown. You see that little log that's kind of pulsing in the water? That is the prime feed lane. That's right where Mr. Big's gonna be. Again, got a current lane coming down. You see the white tops of the, of the, uh, the water? That means it's going from shallow to deep. There's a like a little step drop here. This is the current comes down the fish weights below it and he's pointed up watching for the food and just goes like this and gets it. So we're going to that's the prime one. I'm going to try to put it right across it and run right parallel with the step drop. Well, that went through there pretty well. I'm going to go back a little bit. See if he's in the back side of the hole. The last time I was here, there was a really nice fish in here that turned up on his side, probably a 15, 16 inch brown. He was right, right there, right where we're going to. There. Oh, he hit. He didn't hang on. He might hit again. He just he bumped it. Dragon stuff. I'm gonna let that one come out of there and not spook the hole. A lot of people make a mistake, they drag the stuff they catch on their spinner right through the main part of the hole. And that'll spook your fish. Let the current take it downstream and take it out nice and slow, like it's floating out of there, not being drug out of there. One more back in the corner, oh, You had one, you had one follow. Just now? Yep. Ah. Any size? No, it's pretty small. There. Yeah, you had a hit there. I said, oh, oh there he came is. and got it again. <laughs> so did, did you get that on camera? I think so. All yeah. right. Well, let's see if he'll come back. Was that one any size? He no, he was pretty small. Oh, there's a there fish. You go. There's, there's a nice fish one. I wanted that That's a bow, huh? Yeah. That's a big old brown. Oh, that is a bow. It's a bow. That's a nice bow. Big old fat bow. All right, just beautiful colored male. Ha ha ha. Wet in the hand. Don't ever touch a fish without wetting your hand. Boy, that's a nice fish. I gotta set this down. Okay, knock it off. I'll have you back in the water. No time for it. Cut it, cut it out. Come on, get down in the water, calm down. Right on the top of his top of his beak. And he's off. Boy, that's a nice bow for mm -hmm. such little bitty water. Mm -hmm. Come on, buddy. This is for sure a male. We gotta get a better picture. You're not allowed to leave yet. Well, typically, if I was taking a client, I would get a picture of him with it now. And I guess we gotta video camera taking the pictures today. Don't knock it off. I'll have you back in. Look at that big boy. Look at that kite. That's a tw about a 20 even male. So, see those beautiful spots in the flame? Don't tell your mom. Ha <laughs> ha! 
That was a nice fish. You give me five, that was a nice fish. <laughs> that big a fish getting caught out of there flashing, that hole's done. Yeah. Congratulations, you bagged your trophy. For quality workmanship at a fair price and prompt service to preserve that trophy, call Gatsky Taxidermy. You whack them, stack them, and pack them, and I'll plaque them. Gatsby Taxidermy, 920-648-3890. Get ready for the season at Stokes Sports. Get stoked. You know that the right equipment installed properly can make all the difference in the success of your hunt. You've thought about going to those big box stores, but you're looking for a better archery buying experience. Get stoked. All bows and accessories are set up free, paper tuned, and come with a lifetime annual checkup. Get ready for the season at Stokes Sports in the Wanakee Village Mall at the corner of Highway 19 and County Road Q. Get stoked. Pronghorn Productions capturing your once in a lifetime memories. Whether it's turkey hunting in the Wisconsin woods or fishing the wilds of our country's beautiful lakes and rivers, have us capture those moments on tape and edit them into a wonderful keepsake DVD for you to share these once in a lifetime events with friends and family. Have a special hunting or fishing trip planned? Consider us for capturing your event to keep those memories alive for a lifetime. Pronghorn Productions offers professional videography and editing services for all of your outdoor needs. So, for the best video and editing, call my dad at 438-7250. Or visit our website at www.pronghornproductions.net. Right exactly here, where it goes from shallow to, to deep. It goes from a foot to about three and a half foot. And they lay face up and kind of pointing towards the surface. You pop it over, they come and get her. This segment of Pronghorn Productions TV is brought to you by Town & Country Insurance Services, serving Wisconsin for 30 years. Go. <laughs> ah! Just got off. Mm. It's time to. It's time to change them. I had too many. Get off. It's time to change this spinner. Back. I changed spinners because I lost too many in a row, and I was thinking maybe that my my trebles were getting dull. So I tied it on with an improved cinch knot, and with fire line. When you put your fire line on your reel, you got to make sure that you put mono backing on it. Because if you don't put mono backing on it, when it gets under 30 degrees, the fire line will actually free spool on your rod and you won't be able to uh, set the hooks. It's important to have backing. Oh, there's a decent Ooh, fish. Yeah, that's really Up he comes, and I think maybe I should have, and, and I'm touching my net before I touch the fish, that way I can get my hands wet, not to mess with their flying coat. And not worse for the wear, let's send her home. And a little drop like that in the water won't hurt them a bit. A lot of people like putting them in right at water level. They don't drop them. But DNR, when they stock fish in the area, they drop them right off the bridges. And I think two feet versus eight feet off a bridge, I think they're pretty safe. Key is not to try, try not to keep them out of water too long. The, the DNR pamphlet says they don't want you to keep them out longer than 10 or 15 seconds. I try five if I can, if there's nothing holding me up. But uh, typically I have my client keep, if I take them out, I have them keep the fish in the net. I get my camera out, I get my camera focused, they lift it up, I take one picture, no matter if it's bad or not. We take only one, they're out of the water about three seconds, we pop them right back in. 
There's a good cat. There's a little bit, well, he's a little bigger than I thought he was. First he felt little. He's about that side, maybe a little bigger than the last one. What? Should have just stayed down there. Typically, if you caught, let's say, a 24-25 uh, inch male, how old do you suppose that trout would have to be? To be well, trout vary on their sizes on what they've been eaten. But from my research I've done, the oldest trout, that, inland trout that they've dated has been 13 years, mm -hmm. recently. Um, 8 to 13 is probably about as old as they get. That last fish, probably three years old, I'm guessing. So it has a lot more potential to get bigger. Sure. Let's get his mom. Well, folks, unfortunately, we're out of time for this week's episode of Pronghorn Productions TV. Len and I fished both public and private. What you just saw was the private streams that we fished on. Next time, we'll see Len fish the public. And the public was almost as good, if not better, than the private for producing fish. That'll be coming up a little later on in the season. Now, next week's show, uh, we're going to be featuring some turkey hunting again. I had turkey season last week, and Karen's got turkey season this week. So we should have some footage for you, hopefully. Hopefully you have a bird on the ground, and we'll be able to show you that then. But until next week, take a youngster in the outdoors and pass on our hunting and fishing traditions to the next generation. I'm Chris Kittleson. We'll see you next week. Don't miss the blooper after the credits. down like it's a big brown. Boy, this is a big fish. It's a rock. <laughs> hey, look at that. Big fish of the day. All right. 30 pounder. I don't think I'm going to throw that one back in. Email your comments or questions to TV at yahoo.com. I look forward to hearing your insights.